and you can see me. There we go. Okay, so I'm sure that most of you are very familiar with Beloved Isles, but just to give you a bit of a rundown on what this exhibition is, this is a show that we're doing rotating between two of our satellite um, locations for the National Gallery, the Cayman Brac Beach Resort and the Little Cayman Museum. And this is a photographic exhibition of works by 41 local artists capturing the unique environments and people of the sister islands. And collectively, the, these image, images depict the natural landscape, endemic species, seascapes, historic architecture, and all of the wonderful and amazing things that our sister islands have to offer. Um, and this is a partnership with the Cayman Islands Legacy Fund, the Brack Beach Resort, and Little Cayman Museum. So we're thankful to them for being part of this project. Tonight, we have with us three of our amazing artists, and I know some of our other artists are also on the call, so welcome as, as guests this time round. So tonight we're going to be speaking with Leonard Bodden, Debbie Truckin, and Alta Solomon about their work. And that's kind of it for me. I'm going to leave it over to the artists and then we'll come through with um, questions in between each artist. So Debbie, why don't we start with you? I have your presentation here, which I will share on my screen. Okay, can everyone see my screen okay? All yep. good? Okay. Yep. okay, great. So Debbie, over to you. Well, first of all, um, this is the Beloved Isles, the artist uh, talks. And, and um, I am from Little Cayman and I've been here for oh, over 20 years or so. And, um, and so I do get to um, have the blessings of, of the beauty of these islands every day. Um, so we'll move on to the next slide, and um, and and so with um, I want to say to begin with, as a photographer, it's just one of the areas that I, I work in, and and it's not something I I do take photographs every day, but um, I'm an artist in many forms, and uh, from from being a chef to um, games with children, uh, you know, many forms. So what I really want to say is that um, I look at photography, uh, uh, what, what do you focus on in life? You know, what do you focus on? And so everything is the same for photography. And are you willing, are you willing to explore? Um, how, do you, how do you discern a subject? And are, are you able to focus clearly? That's difficult for a lot of people these days, just even focusing clearly. And so I think photography to me is also one of the, the venues that makes you stop and focus. And then uh, do you react to, um, to, to photography? Do you react to a moment? Oh, that sun looks great that this second, the rainbow just came out or whatever, or, or um, do you ardently seek? Are you out seeking photograph moments? Not, not just reacting to them. Next one. Um, so in photography, the basics, right? Uh, is um, the, the line, the shape, the color, the size, the depth. And uh, so I took a flower arrangement um, that actually I was given on my birthday at breakfast. And uh, so this is the flower arrangement I saw. And I looked at all of these things within it, immediately got my, actually all of these pictures, it's all one flower arrangement that we're going to see. And, and uh, wh what's happening with this is that I, I started looking deeper into it. And I started looking at, at the color so if we go into the next one, we'll just kind of go through them quickly. And so some of these are a little bit farther away and then closer. So next one. So this is a closer shot. And I have to tell you, these are all on my phone. These are all on my phone. So there we go with, a, you know, again, a little deeper into the arrangement and now deeper into the flower. So in the next one again, there's the flower in the arrangement, and then here it is by itself. The 
there's just so much mystery to me in, in, in these. And um, then back to the flower arrangement again and a part of it, and then again, a little bit bigger. You start seeing more depth into those. And then, then the whole arrangement again, and then again, right back, uh, we'll go to the last slide, which I say photography to me is, capturing life, living moments that become memories, focusing on the abundance, the mystery, the beauty, the power, unity, and the wonderment of it all. So how deep are you connected in life, in photography, in, in, in your home, in your homeland? How engaged are you? And how open are you? So photography is one of the mediums I, I, I um, explore. And these all merged together for me in many other forms of creativity. And it greatly enhances and uplifts me. And, and um, you know, uh, today it was raining. And I, you know, the dew drops, um, were just falling beautifully on so many things. And I just wanted to get out there with my camera, but I was actually heading out to the Marine Institute as I'm cooking there this week. And, and so I'm just finding that um, even today, someone in, in the cooking, they said, oh my God, these flavor, flavors are amazing. How did you come up with this? What is this? And it was, for me, it was just a sandwich, but it was a baked sandwich with layers of things. And, and, and I think that's again on our life, it's layers. Whether I'm a chef, whether I'm teaching an art class, wh whether, whether I, during my lifetime as a recreation therapist, working with the multi-disabled, whether it was a, my life as a professional clown, every single thing is layers and discovering. And, and you know, if you want to be, I feel this strongly, if you want to be a good photographer, you have to plant yourself somewhere, your feet firm somewhere, and then take many, 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 hundreds and hundreds of photos, and maybe you'll get a great one. And so that's what I think it is in a lot of things. You have to really stand firm in something and really develop really strongly developed that. So, you know, as a, as a photographer, I feel like a little bit of a fraud here right now, but um, maybe it's just because it's so integrated into my life. It's just a big part of me and, and, and it helps me to look at life in, in, in beautiful ways. So I think I'll just stop there because I, I, really, want to, I really want to learn Yes, Debbie, I, I love that idea of mindfulness as really being a part of the practice of photography, because I think, you know, sometimes photography gets kind of two reps. It gets the, the rep of, oh, well, it's, you know, you're, it's just somebody taking a picture of something that's already there and there's not much to it. You can just snap the photo and go. And then it also gets the rep of being something that's very, very highly processed. And of course it can be both things, but I like this idea of it being something that comes from a real appreciation of what's around you opening yourself to your senses and just being more mindful in your day to day. Um, I know that you are a very spiritual person and you work a lot with mindfulness practices and with just trying to live your, your life in, in a way that you can appreciate the things around you. Can you talk a little bit about um, how some of those mindfulness practices in just your general and personal life have informed the way that you create art a little bit more? Um. First of all, I, I find so many things are into, integrated itself. You know, I have used, um, I'll just reflect a little bit on a project I was doing in uh, Grand Cayman. I, I went over to Grand Cayman and I was doing, at the college, I was doing Thai cooking classes and uh, in the afternoon evenings. And in the mornings, I was teaching uh, eco art classes at Georgetown Primary School. 
And so I go out early in the morning and I collect banana leaves and I collect mesh from coconut and I collect all different kinds of things. And, and I would use the same things for the art class as I would use for the cooking class. I got some of the stuff I would gather. And so it's really interchangeable. And, but for me, okay, there's a quote um, in my faith and it says, arts, crafts and sciences uplift the world of mankind and are conducive to its exaltation. So I believe that arts, crafts and science and, and, and there's a science in photography, there's an art in photography and there's that whole idea of vision and, and appreciation of beauty. And so I think that all uplifts us. And so I think that quote to me says it all to how I look at life. That's a beautiful quote. And I think it really speaks to, you know, what we do at the gallery as well in terms of trying to integrate all of those things together, the science, the math, the art, all of these different equations, because they do speak to each other so strongly. And I think a lot of people don't realize how strongly they are connected. We actually were writing a um, one of the worksheets for our new exhibition, for example, and thinking of all these math questions that we could do with it, you know, like a wall is 11 feet across and a an, an, uh, curator wants to hang so many pieces on the wall, what percentage of the wall needs to be covered by, et cetera. So it's mm -hmm. interesting the way that these things all come together. I think Alta has a question for you. Alta, do you wanna go ahead? You just need to take yourself off of mute. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Hi, everyone. Um, not so much a question, but um, I really felt what Ms. Debbie said in regards to her cooking. I come from a family of cooks, and I think that's one of her first art forms. Um, if you are a, a cook or a chef, it really is an art form. And I'm just thinking about her traditional um, meals. Um, and our heavy cakes and how much mm. care like our, our people had to take to do certain foods. So when she said that, it just like reiterated, like we are such artistic people in so many different ways. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, and I think just, you know, having the having that traditional knowledge and even scientific knowledge of the, the ingredients that you're cooking with too, you know, knowing when to pick the coconuts for the things that you're making or when to pull those banana leaves or whatever it is, using those ingredients in a really, um, a really sort of scientific way, but also a way that comes with so much tenderness and love and so much culture behind it as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I think we're going to go on to our next artist now. Mm -hmm. So Leonard, if I can have you pull up your, um, your slides and I will leave the floor to you. Leonard, do we still have you? We might Hello. have lost, oh, did we, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Hi, perfect. Sorry, I thought I lost you for a second there. Okay, so okay. if you want to go ahead and I will leave the floor to you. I'm trying to get up my slide or my presentation. I don't know where it went to now. Oh, Lord. So Leonard, you've actually got two pieces um, in the show, Umbrella Beauty and Amazing Little Rock. Um, right. Looking at um, part of the bluff and then looking at this amazing little um, plant that looks like a little umbrella. Which is quite cool. And it made me think I was actually. Right. Um, go ahead, please. Okay. Um, just basically a little bit about me for those who don't know me. I'm Leonard A. Borden, I'm a retired high school teacher. I'm born bred Braca, so Braca to the bone. Um, I'm a self-taught amateur photographer. I took one course in university and um, I really didn't do very much with photography until recent times. Now that I'm retired, I have a lot of time on my hand. So I'm, I, I'm, I'm dabbing more in photography for so many reasons and uh, uh, Debbie actually highlighted a few of them. I believe in lifelong learning. That's, a, that's mm -hmm. the teacher in me. 
Um, I believe that every day that we can learn from everything, whether it's people, uh, nature, et cetera. And hence, another reason I got into back into photography. I think our sister islands have a lot to offer when it comes to the natural environment. And my favorite subjects include landscapes, flowers, animals, sunsets. Um, the little amazing rock there, amazing little rock. I don't know how many of you have, um, have been over to the um, Cayman Brack recently and so forth, but the bottom line, this particular iconic feature is so um, photographed by so many people every day, I imagine. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely one of those features that if anyone is visiting Cayman Brack, it is a must see, whether you're photographing it or you're just viewing it. But the bottom line, the, this iconic feature, if you can see, is being heavily eroded by, the, by wave action. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately in time, I hope no time soon, but there will be a time when it will become a part of a sea. So, taking these kinds of photos for um, you know, preservation um, for, for, for future generations, et cetera, et cetera. It's probably the impetus mm -hmm. for me to take uh, photos of the natural environment. Um, Debbie mentioned about you know, connecting and being engaged and uh, open. And I find that I am picking up every article that I can find on photography. I'm a little bit intimidated because there's a lot of jargon and I find myself engulfed and becoming a little stressed. So I step back and remind myself why I'm getting into photography because it's certainly a stress reliever. Um, a lot of articles are coming out now about people um, becoming connected to nature and how it's beneficial psychologically, mentally, physically, emotionally. So I encourage anyone that has uh, some kind of interest in photography or any of the arts to really, you know, get yourself involved because it does good for the body and soul, if you want to put the soul in quotation marks. But this particular um, little rock there, if you go to the north side of Cayman Brack to the very end in the district of Spot Bay, um, this particular feature can be found in Long Beach. The best view, however, is from the top of the bluff, you know, from ocean floor to vertical, it's about 150, I think 53 feet. Looking down is not for the faint of heart. So if you're afraid of height, Unfortunately, I don't think this particular view is yours, but if you will have no issues with heights, I think um, viewing this little iconic feature is, is fantastic. Um, that particular day, the, the, the lighting was perfect, the wind, it can be quite windy. So I wouldn't encourage anyone to get near the edge on a windy day, mm -hmm. but that day, the weather was fantastic. And actually, fact, I took about I would say 20 photos. I like to just click, click, click away. You know, somebody uh, ironically says, how many pictures you take for one feature? I'm like, it could be hundreds, but not, yeah. not I'm exaggerating a bit. But when I look back at that particular one, I'm like, wow, okay, I'm pleased with what I've done. And hopefully other people would be as well. And um, going back to what Debbie said about the, the uh, arts and crafts, um, I only did a little bit of dabbing in high school. I took um, O-level art, did reasonably well in it. But the bottom line, I hope any young person that's viewing this um, Zoom meeting would understand that taking part in the arts, whether it's uh, photography or drawing or painting or acting or whatever it is, it does good for the soul. It does yeah. great for the mind. And I encourage anyone to get involved and hence thanks to the national gallery we have this kind of venue and it's most appreciated um, moving on to the, the the next one this particular um, photo was taken by 
I would like to say fluke because it's a flower that's a part of the bay vines that we have in our country. And it's a very small flower that can be overlooked by anyone. And it's it, at dusk or dawn, you can find these flowers on, the, on one of the bay vines, the, 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 the smaller of the three types that we have. And I'm not sure, I know I took it with my 18 to 55 millimeter lens and I did it uh, because it's a, a, a macro level. I, I just, I'm flabbergasted because I didn't know, when I looked at it, I took about maybe 12 photos of that flower that day. And when I looked at this particular one, I'm like, wow, how did I do that? And I tried to repeat that a couple of days mm -hmm. later and I didn't. So here, hence learning, lifelong learning again comes in. I have to learn to become better at the jargon, the ISO, the whatever, whatever, what. All of those mm -hmm. things are, are fantastic. But, but if you find yourself getting so bogged down in your mind about being, making sure you're so correct and so um, with the, the jargon, you lose the whole desire. So I, I couldn't believe this particular photo, but I'm like, wow, I really took that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm not tooting my horn too much, so I'll, I'll stop. But I'll, um, I encourage people to look further at the very small uh, aspects of our, our, of our natural environment. They're overlooked, the underdogs, if you want to call it, they're overlooked mm -hmm. and um, they can be very, uh, um, very beautiful features to photograph or to to paint or to draw etc um i believe that photography in itself isn't about just taking photos it's about sharing and what better way to share a little bit about you your interest